One, two, three. Be ready to roll. Good morning, good morning, or afternoon, wherever you are, evening, night. Um, this is episode two, and thank you for everyone that listened in to our intro, episode number one. Yeah, it was great. This is Wealth and Wellness Podcast, brilliant, with the big hat, aka Nicholas, and... Um, so in this episode, we're gonna talk a little bit about um, paying more now actually means paying less in the long run, mm-hmm. and that will be um, covering you know even in the way of food that we eat, uh, construction materials we build, use in renovation projects, um, clothing that we wear. You know, fast fashion versus uh, more sustainable materials. Just for um, long-term world betterment as well, we kind of have to think about those things as well as, you know, using renewable sources for energy, wind, solar. And then Nicholas is going to also share a little bit about... um, viruses and problems that can happen cyber security yeah. and investing into protecting your mm-hmm. uh, company's assets in that way because more and more you know mm-hmm. we've been having these problems for a long time but it's just getting more intense with these hackers out there yeah and it's you know no one is immune you know no right. company it doesn't matter how big or small you are even if you're just a one person operation working out of your home office yeah so i'm gonna say one thing like a couple weeks ago came into my attention and as some of you may know or may not we are landlords and we have properties you know we started investing when we got married we started investing into some real estate Mm -hmm. our first property that we bought you know we we um you know, we we are not we are not rich folks, you know, and especially back then, um, we try to save money as much as possible, you know, and we just, um, I guess, had like almost like or I did like just mentality, not looking into things deeper, just going with the cheapest stuff that's possible. For example, like. Um, flooring right like you can do like everyone's doing this luxury whining floors mm-hmm. right now mm-hmm. but looking back like well, and expect you know this was five years ago too. yeah five or six years and, ago uh, you know i just want to say too i don't know if we were necessarily looking for the cheapest right if we didn't but, use the cheapest kind yeah, i think but you know, we yeah. were new to being landlords. We were new to investing. Um, you know, I had some level of renovation and construction experience um, already. But, you know, we were talking to other landlords. We were talking to other people that had done this before to kind of see what they recommended. You know, and that's how LVP kind of came to what we were looking well, at. Well, it's yeah. just like what everyone's doing sort of thing, and mm-hmm. you don't think much of it. And... Um, and in back a long time ago, like I renovated apartment back in Lithuania too. And we did back then used to be like laminate, you know, and now it's like this luxury vinyl. But now that I know more, I'm, uh, you know, I've done many more apartments, many more renovations and including offices, um, like adding hardwood, it doesn't cause that much more. Mm-hmm. And when you look over 2050, years it actually costs less because it won't go out of style so you won't be paying again 10 years down the line replacing that luxury Mm -hmm. vinyl or 20 years you know you could just uh, recoat refinish if you need to the hardwood Mm -hmm. and it looks timeless it looks more high-end it looks more classy um yeah it costs less like a percentage less on the short run to use like vinyl or even carpet 
some landlords still use, but I feel like people are moving away from that. Right. The thing to keep in mind with hardwood is, there, with any flooring, there, there, there's disadvantages, you know, to any flooring. It doesn't matter what type of flooring it is. There's some... No flooring is perfect. Right, exactly. So, you know, LVP does have some advantages. It, it's 100% waterproof. You yeah, know. but you can coat the hardwood mm -hmm. with coat sealants that are, they're, they say they're waterproof. Obviously, if you keep a puddle of water mm -hmm. for extended period of time, it'll mm -hmm. probably eat away at it. Right. But will so the vinyl. If you constantly pour water on the vinyl, it will eventually cause damage to it. Like you can like constantly mm -hmm. pour water on it and expect yeah, and you know there's advantages to LVP. You can, you can replace a board, you know, in the middle. I mean, you can uh, you can clearly do that with with uh, wood flooring as well, but it's not as simple. Um, but you know, the one thing that I do agree with is that it, it does look nice. You know, it is timeless. Well, it you feels know, I grew better. Up, yeah, I grew up with hardwood, and you know, I love hardwood. I despise carpet. It's warm <laughs> on your feet. The hardwood. Yeah. I mean, not as warm as carpet, but the, so, but the point though I didn't make yet is it's reason it's not just about the money. So this is, you know, wealth and wellness podcast. It's mm -hmm. not just about the well, right. wealth, but it's about the health. Mm -hmm. The the thing is like now they are making ex like Lowe's and Home Depot have disclaimers on their website um, and other flooring companies that, you know, they no longer use formaldehyde, mm -hmm. which is like embalmment fluid. And it's really bad for you because it off gases. Yeah. And it and it once it accumulates in the body, a body can really eliminate those particles. It's one of those chemicals. It's a carcinogen. So, you know, the cancer rates are really mm -hmm. uh, not decreasing despite that medicine is evolving, evolving a lot mm -hmm. and there's more different uh, therapies. Uh, but it's because plastics are surrounding everywhere. So, yeah, so, okay, so Lowe's and Home Depot, other companies, they no longer accept these Chinese cheap-made luxury vinyl that... Ha, uh, had formaldehyde, but guess what? They replaced it with different kind. It's still plastics, and especially these recycled plastics um, that they pr recycle from old plastics where there used to be less regulation. So you, now you have the new product of plastic that still has old plastic in it that we don't know what's in it, and and you know the study has been shown that they found uh, kids absorb it through the skin, you know, mm -hmm. um, and people, adults that maybe have more compromised uh, sis, um, immune systems mm -hmm. or lungs, it's um, that stuff is not good for you. And like I said, it's, got, it's better. Like we tested the luxury vinyl that we installed, that we have, you know, that we installed in the past. And we we'll probably might still install it in the future to, you know, we're still going to use it to some, but we are moving like towards more, especially I'm leaning towards now doing more um, actual wood, and but it, but you know it's it's um, you know I'm I'm st what, what what was I saying I think I lost my thought. Well, I, I I think you know one thing that I wanted to mention is it's it's kind of like uh, cooking cooking you know cooking pans you know. It was. It's well known that Teflon oh, yeah. is not good for yeah. you. Yeah. You know. It. It's. It's. There's no debate on that. And you know what Dupont did was okay. We know Teflon is bad for you, but um, what we're going to do is we're we're going to replace it. We're going to replace it with something that's not essentially bad for you. And they came up with Project X. Um, and at a chemical level, yes, it's different, but it's it, it's really not. You know, it's just a yeah. For, it's forever supposed count. to be made to yeah. to appear. Maybe it's, yeah, it's like a tiny, it's better to some degree. Oh, yeah, what I was saying where I lost my thought there was that um, we tested the one that we have installed into our 
apartments, mm-hmm. um, thankfully, it doesn't have that Prop 65 California warning, which mm-hmm. is like a good sign to know if it has mm-hmm. bad, still has bad stuff in it. Yeah. And, you know, so, when we did look into it a little bit more, um, I, I think <laughs> in retrospect, you know, it, it, it was a good flooring. It was a good product. Um, well, it was it, like a more durable wear and tear price point. But mm-hmm. like I said, it's still plastic. It's yep. still wish, like almost we mm-hmm. added like a dollar or two dollars <throat> per square foot and mm-hmm. we could have gotten hardwood. I think it would have been more than that. And, you know, the install Maybe would have been more. But, you know, in, Dollars. you know, retros- depends what kind of hardwood you buy. Too. Retrospect is always, you know, or hindsight is always twenty twenty. And when we were doing the initial renovations, we didn't have a lot of experience. We're relying on, you know, information from other landlords um, in the area. And, you know, all landlords have their thing. You know, they have. I'm going to do tile. I'm going to do this paint color. Tile I'm going to do, you know, this. Tile is amazing, too. Tile is one of the mm-hmm. other best, least um, harmful to mm-hmm. health of type of flooring. Yeah, and, you know, it's you do what you can with the information that you have at the time, and, you yeah. know, you hope that it's the yeah. right decision. And sometimes yeah. it is, sometimes it isn't. And, you know, at, at, at one point, um, you know, smoking cigarettes was thought to be good for you. <laughs> yeah, they did that in the hospital, right? That which is mind blocking. Yeah, to you know, me. I never seen I'm that, not that in my life. You know, I like but... to think that I'm not that old. <laughs> Maybe I am old. Your but, parents saw that. But you know, when I was a kid, you know, you could smoke cigarettes in the mall. You know. I mean, I remember like the re- inside restaurants. Yeah, it was disgusting. And, and you know, I you think about it that, now, it was yeah. gross. But, you know, and that goes to a lot of, you know, just thinking about building materials and things in general. Is, like asbestos, you know, they banned that. They, yeah, used it was to, thought they of, still use it in China. Yeah, you know, it was, asbestos was thought as the, a miracle material and they were putting in everything. And they was except that it lands in your lungs and then can cause cancer. Yeah. And, um, you know, we're seeing a lot of that now with the, the PCB um, issue that we're seeing with uh, Burlington High School and you yeah. know probably most of the high schools unfortunately in Vermont so I'm not even sure what is the PB, PBC what is that so? PCBs you know it's it's without getting into you know the, the the gritty details of it but it's kind of similar to asbestos it was kind of thought of as like a, a miracle material so to speak is it like a mineral pow- like is it mined is it I'm not exactly sure that how the the chemical if you guys know, compound posted in the comments down below. <laughs> is exactly made or manufactured, but you know they were putting it in everything, you know, flooring, mm. um, you know, yeah. ceiling material, and uh, unfortunately, at the time, whether they knew or not, who knows? Doesn't really matter at this point because it is what it is. But you know, now we're. I guess it's bad for your lungs, right? Yeah, it's we're all about starting the to air find out a lot of these school. materials that we thought were safe or maybe we hope that we're safe, or maybe not. Yeah. But, you know, th- mm-hmm. thinking logically, that PVC, um, when you have the whole floor and, and everything PCBs. like... PCBs. But, no, PCBs, yeah, one thing, mm-hmm. but PVC is luxury vinyl. It's pretty much PVC. Mm-hmm. It's like the same stuff like mm-hmm. plastic. It's everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, just we're swimming in plastic. But so, yeah, even know. the clothing, you know, like, yeah. um, so the other point I was going to bring up, uh, you know, it's made from oil, like all these microfiber and these acrylic and synthetic, like mm-hmm. more than 50% in the world, all clothing these days is made from plastic, uh, those microfiber materials. Yep. Um, and I don't, even forgot all the names of though, but they have different names to, to them. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, so and people sleep in that stuff. So the better thing, at least um, to reduce oil-based uh, fabrics is to, you know, um, to better our health is to at least buy cotton sheets. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, they, they are more expensive but you spend half of your life in your bed, you yeah. know? You know, I, I can't remember. Maybe it was my, my grandmother or my parents or someone, but they they always said, you know, where you want to spend money is things that protect you 
from the ground. So, you know, think of shoes, tires for your vehicle, um, and, you know, a good mattress. And, you know, yeah. along with a good like mattress. We have um, the Dunlop. Um, it's like um, Dunlop, um, that like natural. It's, um, what's that called? Um, it's like a rubber mattress. Yeah, like rubber yeah. from natural uh, um, palm or some trees. I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, where, but I but, I can put link. Yeah, we'll put to, a link in the description. Um, but you know, yeah. I don't exactly remember how much the bed was. But it's it, like uh, for the mattress. It's like fifteen, sixteen hundred. But that was four years ago. Yeah, you know, it's now. probably a lot more now. But looking at you know, okay, spending fifteen hundred dollars on a mattress. Um, you know, you can probably go to Costco right now and buy a, a mattress for probably three, four hundred dollars. Uh, well, not a very. You can get a Walmart two hundred dollars yeah, you know, memory is, foam. The but is that where you want to save your money? <laughs> you know. Yeah, maybe and, a temporary sleeping situation. Yeah, yeah but like I mean, not long term. Yeah, like, this is kind of going into a topic that I know you Alita wanted to cover, which was you know fast fashion and you know an yeah. example that I have of that kind of somewhat personally is, you know, I, I used to be into like belts and things like that and having kind of like a cool belt. And I was buying, you know, these, what I look as now, you know, these cheap belts that even though quote unquote, they were technically genuine leather, which is the lowest quality leather that you can buy. And they would last, you know, three, four months, maybe five months. And mm -hmm. then they would just kind of start to fall apart. And so these belts were, you know, 20 25 30 dollars yeah. okay you know that's that's not a ton of money it's like something you get at h m m yeah like, but you, you know, know i look at it now as okay you you know i was spending you know buying but then you spend hundreds of dollars you know buying a, a couple different belts over the years yeah. you know so you're spending you know what 100 bucks 150 dollars a year and then a friend of mine um, mentioned uh, a, a, a leather company that uses, you know, high quality, full grain leather. I mean, these belts are thick. It's Saddleback Leather, not sponsored, but willing to take a sponsorship if anyone from there is listening. <laughs> um, and we'll put a link to in the description too, just because, uh, you know, I'm a believer, you know, in their products. Mm -hmm. Their products are rock solid. Are they cheap? Nope. How much is a belt? Here's the thing, you know, I'm spending a hundred bucks a year getting these belts that I think I'm, get, I'm getting a good deal on, and I turn around and buy a saddleback leather belt for 125, 150 bucks, and I've had the same. Well, I'm onto a second belt. The only reason I'm onto a second belt is um, I needed one that was smaller, which is oh, okay. always a good thing yeah. with belts. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's those, bad news when you need a bigger one. Exactly. I, I needed a, a new belt because I needed a smaller one. Um, but, you know, I've had that second belt. I mean, the first one was probably easy five years. Yeah. You know, and then the second one I've had for probably, I mean, I got it right before we got married or before we met. So mm -hmm. that was, you know, 2014, 2015. 2015. Yeah. yeah. And the it, it looks brand new. And one of the things I like about Saddleback Leather is, you know, they have this a guarantee, you know, it's a hundred year guarantee, which I'm like, okay, I'm never going to need this yeah. because I probably won't be around. But the way the mattress that we yeah. got, it's 20 year warranty. Yep. And, you know, Saddleback Leather says, you know, they'll fight over it when you're dead. So, oh, okay. That's funny. <laughs> you know, but where I'm going with that is, you know, sometimes people think of, oh, well, you know, or they have to, you know, they have to buy, you know, kind of a cheap pair of shoes or well, a cheap. Well, if you can't spend yeah, but at that time, $100. unfortunately, yeah, you're spending more in the long run by buying a lot of this fast, fast yeah. fashion. I can't even pronounce it right. Yeah, well, um, you know, junk sometimes. But at the that's end of the how day. sometimes yeah. poor people stay poor. You know, even yeah. like with eating, why uh, like less income neighborhoods have more poor health. Like oftentimes because they or, can only afford yeah. like eating at McDonald's, right. you know, because it's fast and it's cheap, yeah. but it's not really good for you. Yeah, and you know, and there's... no offense to McDonald's, they're great at business what they do, but the food is not healthy. Let's keep yeah, that Yeah, and it's straight. just, you know, there's a lot of poor food options in this country, you know, and a lot yeah. of what is readily available easy to obtain and you know 
relatively inexpensive is unfortunately well you can like if you, you yeah. um only make a certain amount of money and you have to like feed your kids and pay all the bills you definitely don't want to spend twenty dollars on a salad you know which is healthier mm-hmm. but you you like can rather spend five dollars on a cheap right. like yeah. burger you know yeah and unfortunately you know that is going to have a negative impact on your health but too, yeah and you know. you know diabetes and cancer risk and um mm-hmm. other things mood you know mm-hmm. uh, but that's also going back to again now um you know even if you don't have money there are still ways to eat healthy mm-hmm. because um you just have to invest more time maybe you have to just mm-hmm. prepare more food at home cook more food at home for example yeah. beans are not not expensive you know yeah and um you know i have a friend she's really into making like different types of salad dressings and yeah. sauces for food you can buy a bunch of lemons and olive oil and, and garlic and make i can't remember nice exactly what dressing. she was talking about what salad dressing or something i think it was maybe like a ranch or a ranch peppercorn she was like you know it's literally like three ingredients yeah and i'm thinking okay honey you know, is good ingredient yeah you know you to, get a couple them. lemons yeah. and you know and you can you know, make a huge amount of this salad dressing. And it's like, hey, well, that's actually probably a lot cheaper, clearly much better for you yeah. than buying the Hidden Valley ranch dressing that's full of who knows what type of oil, yeah, well, canola it's just oil, I think. A, you yeah. have to have an understanding and willingness. So going back yeah, and, to... And, and the time, too. Yeah, you know, but that's go, the biggest thing yeah, is time. But going know, back now, like, invest more time and money mm-hmm. to spend less money later because, hey, what, you won't have to spend money on medical bills. Yeah. So, like, spending yeah. more money now and time mm-hmm. on that yep. healthier meal option, mm-hmm. it's actually will keep you better well off and healthier in the long run. Yeah, and it tastes so much better, too. You know, I... I'm a fan of pizza, as Yolita can probably attest to. I love pizza. Um, But I was like, you know what? Like, uh, my mom has a spare cast iron pan. I'm going to give it a shot, just making my own pizza. I'm like, okay, first of all, this is not that hard. (laughs) And it tastes so much better, you know, than even going out to a restaurant. So it's like, okay, you know, some more, a little bit more time, you know, invested now for a better meal and you actually feel better after eating it. You don't feel this grease bomb sitting in your stomach. You don't feel sluggish from yeah. all the salt and, yeah. and you know, those hydrogenated oils is so yeah. bad for you because they reuse them and reuse them and reuse yeah. them, like especially the fried food. And one thing, you know, during renovations that I actually don't really mind doing is, you know, shop backing, doing cleanup, you know, doing trash outs is because it's, you know, it's hard work to a point, but it's an immediate gratification. You know, you go into a room and it's trash because, you know, 10 different trades have been through doing, you know, different work or whatever. And, you know, an hour later, that place is cleaned up, mopped out. And it's like, oh, my, oh, my God, this place looks amazing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. And um, well, the other thing, like, organic with with conventional food um you know if you can't afford organic veggies eating any veggies is still gonna be better than no fruits right. or right. no veggies or no good like no lean meats so by any means you know but if you can like organic um there is a difference you know the level of pesticides that we also consume uh it i i i do not believe that does not have impact on our health and immunity Mm -hmm. because i strongly believe it does and there's been studies done that there is a difference in that produce and sometimes you know just buying produce from local farmers market while it might not be officially certified organic yeah but it's but if you're buying it from you know a farm down the street or a neighbor's farm you know you can be pretty confident that it's 
probably nearly organic without the certification. But I can tell you what, it's going to be way better for probably you than that, minerals in that mass produced than... produce that you would find in, you know, a big box grocery store. Well, the thing about organic produce is the reason why it supports immune system better, I mm -hmm. remember reading this, um, is they have to protect themselves from uh, bugs and things like that mm -hmm. because um, they're almost like they're growing more in the wild natural environment. Mm -hmm. Um, so they're more resilient. That's why when we eat them, we become more resilient mm -hmm. and it's more vitamins, more antioxidants because they have to have those to protect themselves the antioxidants. But when we buy conventional, for example, these huge produce that has not even one speck on them because they're protected artificially by all these chemicals, that produce, that apple, doesn't have to fight for anything, doesn't have to survive any environmental like diseases or bugs or anything. Mm -hmm. So that's, I was reading one of the reasons why organic produce is better for you too. Mm -hmm. Not just because there is no chemicals on it, but because it has like higher level of antioxidants and vitamins. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I guess it's the same. Spending a little more money now yeah. does give you more. Yeah, you know, nothing in life is free. <laughs> you know, nothing comes easy. And sometimes a little legwork right now can save you a lot of time, money, effort, yeah. and health issues down the road. So um, now speaking about that, invest, like for small businesses or just consumers about, mm -hmm. can you share what did you pick up maybe from conference or just in general like with mm -hmm. the work that you do about also protecting yourself from you know those computer uh bad viruses uh, uh, yeah, agents. Malware. Yeah. yeah so it's interesting we're at an interesting time right now in our society where it's almost like you know the the new front lines of criminals are now online you know these groups are mm. well organized um to be honest with you a lot of them are very well funded they can, who funds them um that's a great question <laughs> um sometimes they're self-funded by the that they trading like drugs or something well i think you know when, when people think of cyber criminals and cyber crime the, the first thing that comes to people's minds or at least what my experience and our experience is, is ransomware. You know, that's where a lot of these groups break into systems, mm -hmm. hold your data for hostage, yeah. for money. You know? I know at least several people at companies mm -hmm. that had clicked some links accidentally that look like just fake, you know, QuickBooks or something like yeah. that. And then they enter their password and get by. Yeah. And so, you know, that's where a lot of funding from these groups come from. Um, you know, we can look at an example of a company, 3CX, which was very publicly known about when they were breached. Um, they were breached by a group of individuals that were backed by, a, 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 you know, a, a government. Um, a government? So Why would I, government I, I believe them? that the 3CX um, breach was actually backed by the North Korean government. Oh, I so, see. You know, like the uh, other government. Some of these groups are very well funded or they're nation state funded. So that's where they're getting a lot of this talent to, to perform these cyber attacks. Um, but kind of, you know, switching gears back to where, you know, a lot of companies are under the impression that, you know, I'm too small. It's not going to affect me, you know. Well, no it one... can affect you as an individual mm -hmm. even, the yeah. phishing. So, you know, so no one is immune, you know. The credit cards getting, I had a, we had a client that had their credit cards. Yeah, you know, if you're a home time. user, um, you know, maybe you, your machine gets encrypted and, you know, it's, you know, $500, $1,000, you know, if you want to get your files back or, um, you know, they take over, they compromise your machine and they end up buying, uh, you know, gift cards um, through Amazon. But they to, can for uh, get access to your like payment and, you know. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, if you're a home user, you know, 500 to a thousand dollars is kind of the equivalent if you're a much larger company to, you know, one million to five million dollars. Yeah. You know, it's the scale of, you know, 
Yeah. But one of the biggest things with cyber crime is no one's immune. It's just a matter of time before it it becomes, you know, it, it impacts you, you, your small business, your large business, et cetera. So, so what, so what can we do? You know, that's what everyone always asks is, you know, so what do I do? What are the top things? And the thing is, you know, we need to do as much preparation as we can now to minimize when Any, it does happen. Yeah. And a lot yeah, of that is. is, you know, most of these cyber criminals get into small businesses, large businesses, home users, by email, you know, when you can mm-hmm. send out billions and billions and billions of emails per second, you know, that's that's what these billions c- cyber cr- criminals are Isn't doing. Isn't like how many people on the planet is now? But you have billion? to you have to think about, you know, there's about, I think, eight or nine. I think there's eight billion. I mean, we people definitely the, get every day something definitely that looks like some sketchy email. But, you know, you have to think, you know, a lot of people have multiple email addresses, too. Yeah. So and, you know, a lot of these emails don't even end up, you know, they and end spam. up in a spam filter or they're blocked at a higher level. So but when you're sending out so many emails from one group, a fraction of a percent of click through is well, hundreds of millions game. of do- dollars. It's so, the same with marketing. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. So, you know, it's essentially Sales. free to send out these emails because these groups are using probably compromised servers that they've, you know, compromised from other companies. So they're not paying for the horsepower to send out these uh, emails. And it just takes one one email, one click, and that could really be what encrypts your company. You know, take Dish Networks. Um, they were compromised um, in a fairly low skill is attack. Is this public news? This is public. I do okay. not work for Dish okay. Networks. Um, yeah, this is all know. information that you can publicly get. But, you know, Dish Network's a large company, you know, that's probably spending a lot of money on their IT department, cybersecurity. You know, they're not immune. But because, I mean, there's Mm -hmm. user error and that's like vulnerabilities, like someone is Mm -hmm. not paying attention and clicking what Mm -hmm. they're not supposed to be clicking. That sort of looks like what they're supposed to be clicking. And that's, you know, and that's where user education really comes into play. And, you know, the biggest thing that we say to users, when you do get an email, any email, doesn't matter, you know, the first thing that you want to think in your head is, Am I expecting this email? If you get an email from QuickBooks saying, "Hey, thank you for renewing your QuickBooks subscription," or "Hey, for... we need to update your like account, like your bank information. Enter here." Yep. You know, why yep. would exactly. you gotta think? Why would I need to do that? Yep, that's always the first thing to think of that can really protect you from a lot of these cyber attacks. Is am I expecting this communication? And if you are, you know, if you are expecting, hey, yeah, I know I'm waiting for an email from a vendor and you get an email and it's like, okay, do I really know who this is from? You know, and you kind of have to go through this list of, okay, is there an immediate call to action? You know, is there some sense of urgency? You can um, always, the way I do, if in doubt, like if you want to check if it's really coming from the company saying like, your Mm -hmm. account been suspended, click Mm -hmm. this link to reactivate, to reenter your Mm -hmm. payment, you know. Uh, go directly to that website on yep. your separate browser. Don't go through that link. And then if it's suspended, it will tell you right there. If yep. it's not, then just disregard and I'm, and I'm glad that you brought that up. That's another common pitfall that a lot of people will do is they'll say, okay, hey, I got a notification from my bank, you know, something compromised. And they'll Google the name of their bank or their institution or whoever. And that's a very common way for scammers to do essentially paid ads to appear at the top of Google mm, with, a fake, level. with a fake 800 number to call. To, oh, yeah. Don't call. You know, so the, the example that I always use with what Yolita just said is, um, you know, Amex, loyal fan of Amex, been an Amex customer for years. But, you know, there has been times when I've been traveling and my card has been compromised. And, you know, I'll get an email and typically a text message. And nine times out of ten, the email or the text message says, you know, this is official communication from Amex. Your account has been locked, suspended or whatever. Call the number on your card. 
you know, not here's a number to call, visit this website, you know, it's call the number on your card. You always yeah. want to make sure you're using a known valid number because compromised websites um, are another vector that cyber mm. criminals use. Yeah. And domain squatting, you know. Usually, uh, especially in the past, you've been able to kind of see, okay, this website kind of does not look that, like the graphics are kind of off and like it's pixelated, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. the resolution's not that great. It's missing some tabs, you know, if it looks sketchy, mm -hmm. just don't do it. Um, don't click anything. Um, mm -hmm. And, um, you know, just... Um, also check like the email, the name that it comes from mm -hmm. when it's uh, legit, usually it will say, you know, info at at com. But if it's like scammer, usually might say info at ANT, like, and then info at and at like gmail.com, you know, mm -hmm. or like Yahoo, it won't have like the actual legitimate uh, name of a domain name on that email mm -hmm. yeah and that goes back to you know first question am i expecting this second question do i really know who this is from if it's from amex customer support at gmail.com it's a bad probably one. not american no, express they're not using gmail to tell you that you never know. I would be willing to Rare, bet that well, yeah, American Express that. is not using Gmail <laughs> for official communication. Yeah. And, you know, the next thing is, is, you know, is there a sense of urgency? You know, it's a very common sales tactic. You know, hey, sale ends in 24 hours. Um, you know, I used to do a lot of work at Simon Premium Outlets and every store, every time I would go, sometimes multiple times a year, Sales today, 24 hours only, ends tomorrow. Because most people are only going to the outlets once. You know, they're not going constantly. And I'm like, okay, all these stores are in a constant state of 24-hour sales that expire in 24 hours. But, you know, that cyber criminals, you know, they're sales people at the end of the day. They're trying to sell their product. And one of the ways that they do that is by um, making well, a sense of urgency. They're extorting. Yeah, they're extorting mm -hmm. any vulnerabilities, any... People mm -hmm. that don't, or elderly people, mm -hmm. you know, they will call them and yep. say all crazy stuff like yep. your grandchild is in need, you know, yeah. send us this amount of money. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's bad. Um, and, you know, these groups are well organized, highly automated, well funded, and they're small, you know, so they're typically. During COVID mm -hmm. and after, it like increased, I think. Yeah, and, and that's a good point that you brought up. So with the move to vastly remote work for a lot of people, you know, a lot of people are now working from home, you know, they're not going into the office. And now, some people went back to the yeah, office. Of course, that, like, of in course. In person services, but, but yeah, some There's didn't. been, um, I think it was actually, I don't know if it was Sophos or Sentinel One, which are two well-known security companies, um, did a, some pretty in-depth research about the level of guard that employees have is significantly lower when they're working from home because, you know, they're they're in their home. You know, they feel more comfortable, um, you know, if they were used to having to dress up, maybe they're wearing shorts and a T-shirt, you know, from home. So. Yeah. It's an, another vector for cyber criminals to kind of get their foot into the door by calling people. Their guard's a little bit down, a little bit more comfortable. They're not, um, you know, in the office where maybe their boss is a couple cubicles mm. over. Yeah, different vibe. Yeah, so, you know, you got to think about all these little things that have constantly changing with our world. And unfortunately, that's what these people are looking to exploit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's important. So, mm -hmm. you know, we have to look out research before we mm -hmm. make any decisions, whether it's mm -hmm. about your business security mm -hmm. um, and IT and BT can help he right here. Mm -hmm. um, or, you know, taking care of yourself, buying healthier food, not just going with the flow, you know, we have to think for ourselves, just because someone else is doing something doesn't mean, um, you know, when we are doing renovations, maybe using more healthier materials, I'm glad, like I said, that um, people don't use these 
carpets much anymore. They're mm-hmm. just a trap for kind of nasty, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Hard to, well, it's hard to, you can't really disinfect a porous surface. You can't really use like Clorox yeah, on Yeah, I think it. a lot of people like carpets, you know, in their bedrooms, you know, because they don't want to get out of you bed. You can put a floor. rug. But yeah, I think that's the, you know, that's the, it's easier the play to right there is using um, something that is, you can actually wash. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you, you yeah. know, you it, can get a new one, no problem. Right. Don't have to call flooring company, you know. Yeah, or you know, there's plenty of you know carpet cleaning companies that will come and yeah. take it and clean. Yeah, it for and you. I mean, you mm-hmm. can steam and clean carpet in your home too, and you should do once a year if you have that at home. But just in general, you know, like you're not gonna have steaming company once every couple months coming, you know, cleaning and like dust and allergens and and the glue that they use to Mm. glue down the, you know, uh, and the material itself, it's not a natural material. Again, it's that plastic. So the same as that uh, flooring plastic, you know, so, Mm -hmm. so trying to be more mindful, uh, paying more now, uh, better materials, clothing, food, mm-hmm. and construction will will cost you less more in having to redo it, mm-hmm. uh, take care of it, and or and medical bills. Yeah, I mean it's making that investment now. Yeah, the same with your security. Perhaps you need to review uh, your systems, mm-hmm. what you have, change mm-hmm. passwords so they're not like everywhere. Uh, known by all the people yeah and and, you know it's just like with construction materials you know can you spend a lot on construction of course you know but you know it's not you know some of these tweaks it's just like security you know you can make some small tweaks along the way that is not going to break the bank to really like a big grand scheme of things you know you're not doing renovation every year it's just like once Mm -hmm. every so often Yep. So, you know, spending like a couple thousand dollars more, mm-hmm. it's probably not going yeah, to. Yeah, and, you know, I th- I personally like, like the look of LVP and hardwood floor. But, you know, I think that, you know, the look of, of hardwood is probably going to attract, you know, potentially a higher quality tenant yeah, as well. Yeah, higher end yeah. people too. Yeah, you know. It and just looks better too. Yeah, it's nice, um, you know, and you can, you know, the play Timeless. is, yeah, the play is too, um, you yeah, know, and if the it's, tiles. Putting, yeah, during the rental yeah. cycle is, you know, you can advertise it as, you know, sustainable bamboo flooring, no, luxury, you know, you know, you, you know or, or whatever. Yeah, but yeah, it's, um, you know, I love New York apartments. They, um, they timeless black and white tiles in the bathrooms and you have hardwoods in the living rooms and <coughs> bedrooms it's like classic and i lived in new york city and i i love that look and never goes out of style yep i like to do more of those but um we yeah we we thank you for tuning in with us today uh we will uh have another episode coming up for you probably in another three to four weeks again Um, This is our fun Saturday, um, and I'll upload this to YouTube as well. You can subscribe there at Yolita Brilliant, and Spotify, iTunes. There's some, I think, iHeartRadio, some other platforms that this goes out to. Mm -hmm. Um, So please subscribe. I'd love to connect with you as we make these episodes. Mm -hmm. And uh, give us a shout. I'm on Instagram as well. Nicholas is on Instagram. I'm at Yolita Brilliant. Yep. He's ITVP. Yep. At ITNVT. Yep. Yeah. Love to hear from everyone. And yeah, this is great. This is fun. Keep the momentum going for the next episode. Have a brilliant day. <laughs> healthy and wealthy. Ooh, I like that. Healthy and wealthy. <laughs> <laughs>